Hello, it's Ethan Ives, and I'm here to teach you the basics of Form Simplicity today. I'm going to teach you how to get logged into Form Simplicity, how to write an offer, and how to send that offer for eSignature. So as you can see, I'm logged into FlexMLS. There are two options to log into Form Simplicity from FlexMLS. The first one is on any property detail page, you can log in using this button. You can also go to Menu and go down to Form Simplicity. Either one of these options should log you in automatically from FlexMLS using single sign-on. The first time you're logged into Form Simplicity, I do recommend going to Preferences. When you're logged into Preferences, the first thing to look at is account information. Just make sure everything came across from FlexMLS correctly. Second thing to look at, and this one's really important, is general settings, because by default, the time zone will be Eastern Times. So you need to switch this to Central Time if you want your timestamps on digital signature to be correct. I also recommend filling out your email signature. There are other notifications and preferences that I won't go into on this video. Um, I did want to make one note of the security settings where you can turn on two-factor authentication. I always recommend turning on two-factor authentication on any program, whether it be FlexMLS, Form Simplicity, Facebook, email, any online login that allows two-factor authentication, I always recommend setting it up. I'm going to go ahead and exit out of here, and I'm going to go back to this property detail page for 336 North Delaware, and I'm going to work on setting up an offer um, using Form Simplicity. So I'm just going to click the button like I mentioned earlier, and this time it'll log me into a transaction wizard instead of just taking me to the home page of Form Simplicity. It will import street address, address, uh, listing information, seller's information, the listings agent's broker, and their information into um, the wizard here. The one thing you need to really um, fill out here is going to be your buyer's information. And as you can see, it says party one and party two. So I'm just going to do buyer one here and buyer two here. But you see how it automatically, when I move, it automatically fills out the buyer and tenant names. You do not need to change them here. Just change them in party one and party two. You need to go ahead and add their email addresses at this stage too. You can fill out more information if you like, but this is typically all I do um, when I'm doing an offer through Form Simplicity. Next thing too is just double check to make sure that your license number and your brokerage license number came across correctly from FlexMLS and that all the information that's there needs to be is, is there correctly. So it's going to click Save the Transaction. Then it's going to ask me whether I want to save this to an existing transaction or a new transaction. So me personally, I always run all my transactions based on address. I do know some people do clients. So if you have a client transaction set up that maybe has a buyer's agency agreement already signed, that type of deal in there, you can add that to the existing transaction. And it will ask you to set property type also. So now we have the transaction set up. I'm gonna scroll down to the bottom and look at the transaction participants, so it's got the seller's informa party information and also buyer's information correctly in here. I just always like to double check just to make sure everything's sent in there correctly. So now that we have our transaction set up, the next thing we need to do is we need to add forms. You have two options for adding forms. You can add just blank individual forms, or if your brokerage has set it up, you can add forms packages. So if you go to forms package here, you can see we've got some set up for buyer and listing agents, or listings, sorry. Um, so I'll just pick one up here, or pre-1978. Um, and you do still have to check which documents you want here. So here I'll just come through, check a few different ones, and add them to transaction. You can always click this box, which will highlight all of them. The other way, as I mentioned, was to add blank forms. So you do need to select a library um, before you can get to the forms and also search the forms. So I'm going to click here. Every once in a while, I have it where this won't load the first time, and I just have to go back into it, give it a second here, and typically it loads up correctly. I'm not sure why. I've submitted a ticket on it. I think it might have something to do with my uh, Mac OS versus a Windows PC. So I'll just select Missouri here. As you can see, we've got our company form library, GSBOR library, Missouri, and some Fannie Mae documents. Once you select the library, you can see all the forms here, um, and you just check the box you want or check the boxes of the forms you want and click add to transaction and it'll add them all in there. You did want to point out the magnifying glass because if you're having trouble finding a form that you want, you can click this and it will do a quick load without having to load up a whole new page. You can also search the forms. Um, so if you, you know, wanted RES 2000 or 
guess there's a lot of 2000, but a lot of times I do that. So we can add the sell contract, click add transaction. So basically your two options, add blank forms, add forms package to get your forms into the transaction. You'll also most likely need to upload uh, disclosures. So I've already downloaded the uh, seller's disclosures and measurement disclaimer from that listing. So I'm going to log in here, just highlight both of them, click open, and then save files, and it'll get them loaded up in there. I wanted to point out if you now click these files, it will load them, and you have some PDF options that will help you out here. So if you happen to scan the documents in the wrong way or you receive a document that's not scanned correctly, you can rotate them left and right here. You can also split the PDF here. So if you get, um, you know, uh, offer in that includes disclosures, maybe measurement disclaimers, all one package, and you want to split those out, you can just come in here, select the number. This document's only one page, but if it was more, I could select one to three, name the file, and click create the split file to split this whole thing out. One thing to always know about form simplicity is most of your options to use the program are right up here at top. So e-signature, print the documents, email the documents, fax them. Not sure how fax works, haven't used that one. You can merge documents together, copy them to another transaction. You can download them on the computer or you can delete them. So for the purpose of this, I want to show you guys how to do an e-signature. So I'm going to just select the uh, measurement disclaimer and seller disclosures, and I'm going to click e-sign. And at this point, it'll ask you who needs to sign. So in most cases, if you're writing up an offer, it's going to be your buyers and yourself. Um, they are, um, there are two different e-signature programs right now. eSign 2.0 is the new one that they've been working on. That's the only one I've used since we've launched this. So I can't say much about the other one. So I'm just going to click it here. Now, one thing is this will open up in another program, the e-signature. Um, so sometimes mine automatically opened here, but depending on your computer settings and your browser settings, you might need to allow it to open up the new pop-up. Um, so just keep in mind there, if, the, if it doesn't load, you might need to allow it to open up a pop-up. So here you do need to name, and this will also, the, name the session, I should call it, and then you also, uh, this will be the subject line for the um, e-sign, I believe. So we'll just type that. One thing I want to point out, it does um, do order signing by default. Um, in most cases, when I want to send out an e-signature, I want everybody to get it at once. So no reason for buyer one to sign before buyer two. Um, completely up to you. But if this is left checked as yes, basically buyer one has to sign before it will send to buyer two and then would sign to myself as the agent here. So I'm going to just go ahead and turn this off. Um, the other thing down here, and I think my picture might be in the way, is you are able to load different orders of your documents. You can also upload documents here. So if you forgot to upload one into Form Simplicity, it does give you the option to load them here. I'm just going to click Next now. And it would, so these uh, these are uploaded forms. Um, I probably should have added a form on there because it will autofill signature box on uh, forms that you pull from Form Simplicity. Um, this digital signature works uh, very similar to, uh, you know, Transaction Desk, DocuSign, any of those that you like to use. Um, and right here, so we got buyer one here. I just grab signature, pull it over, date time, switch to buyer two, signature, a time um, and then also myself here now one thing on these documents you do have your markup tools here so if you need to come in and put your brokerage here come in type and you can also add names of your clients for these fields checkbox, you can check mark, highlight, you can also have them uh, type stuff here. All your basic, uh, you know, e-signature options are over here on the live. So once you get the whole document set up the way you want it, all we do, you can preview it, probably not a bad idea. I probably don't do it enough um, on there on, on all the details. But as you send it, it will ask you if you're a signer, if you want to sign now or later. I'll go ahead and do now just so you guys can kind of see what that session looks like for your clients. 
I do always recommend um, going through this process before sending them out, just so you know what your clients are getting. Um, you just have to agree to it. Start signing, and uh, usually if you click to start or scroll down, you just click to go. You can go next, and you know obviously it'll take them through if there's more fields on there, and they can just click yes. So that's done. I can close out of this window, and it'll take me back to the other tab of Form Simplicity. I'm just going to go back to this transaction. So now we've sent it out for eSign. We've uploaded documents. We've gotten our forms. Um, if you scroll down a little bit more, so we have all these options here to make you work with the files and forms. But if we scroll down here, I wanted to point out the eSign sessions. So this is where all your eSign sessions will go. So ones that are completed, ones that are sent out. But this is also where you'll click if you need to make any changes. So think maybe you put somebody's email address in wrong. Um, you know, maybe you need to resend an email. Maybe they couldn't find it. All those type of things are if you click sent here. And sometimes they'll be in drafts. There's different statuses, but you still click that same status there. And so I can come in, all your actions are right here by these dots. You can edit the whole thing. So if you didn't set up the forms or the fields correctly or needed to add more documents, you could edit and essentially start all over, but that will pull it back from anybody who's already signed it. Um, but here are your actions. So buyer one here, I can come in here, resend the email, or I can also edit. So I can edit what they have going on here, change their email address and update it. Um, if they haven't completed it yet, you can resend them an email to send it out. Um, so all your options. So if you have issues with your e-signature, this is where you need to come to make the change. Just going to go back. For the most part, that wraps up, or it does wrap up our quick, basic form simplicity training. Hopefully this was helpful for you. I wanted to get something out there that was quick and easy. Um, on how to set up and submit an offer through here. I will um, get a listing video put together sometime in the near future, but um, for the most part, um, it's not a whole lot different than what we just went through here. Let me know if you guys have any questions. Appreciate your time.